Hello and welcome to the Ebrom Line, where we are apparently streaming. Uh, no, I don't want to have any uh, sensory crap on the uh, videos. Now, why are we streaming? Because my hard drive space on this computer is running out and I don't really want to be um, creating more data to stick on it. Ooh, you can see my hairy chest. And today's video will be focused on a teardown of this. I finally got one. I, bet, I don't think any of you guys know how much I wanted one of these. It is a Thor Thandor. Uh, what's the model number again? Ah, fuck. I forgot. How bloody tip. Hang on, it's on the bottom. SC110. 10 megahertz analog oscilloscope. Actually, a division by Sir Clive Sinclair. So, that's rather interesting. It's in full working condition, at least from preliminary testing, because it arrived at work today, making the workday even more awesome than they usually are because my job is fucking rad. And it works! It leaves! It leaves! Ooh, wee, there we go. Come on, there we go. Look at that, we have a trace. Now we just need a random oscilloscope probe. Hang on, bear with me while I um, find one laying around somewhere in this shithole of a lair. There you are. We have an oscilloscope probe, unappropriately a hay meg, which, well, this certainly is not German quality manufacturing. <laughs> this is Sir Clive Singlet quality manufacturing, which is dubious at best. You know what? It put equipment like it put equipment like this into the hands of the masses, and that in itself has to be respected. <laughs> That's one of the good thing about me, um, cheap Chinese and. Um, test equipment and whatnot is it basically allows anyone to afford stuff that would be otherwise unobtainium. Uh, yeah, um... There's a probe died. Hang on, let me, let me just, uh, this is really exciting video footage right here. Flying buggery has happened now. Mm. Oh god. There. Has this probe died? It was working perfectly at work. I think my probes died. Because when you touch the end, you should get crap on uh, wavy lines on the screen. Okay, so we've got a dead um, probe. Right, we will just ad hoc. This is true EPROB 9 style right here. No planning, no organisation, but. We use good old Rigol, which is one of the good Chinese manufacturers, and Rigol gear is recommended because it's pretty damn rad. Right, we want one times. We don't use ten times really much in my experiments and whatnot. There we go. There we go. Yeah, the probes failed. How annoying. So the triggering is absolute crap on this. Hang on, let me just sort out the triggering. Ugh, um. Okay, that's DC. Okay, that's weird. Depressed seems to be... Ugh, uh, what? I don't get it! Anyway, let me just sort out the trigger. 
So here we go with a working scope probe. Hang on, I've just noticed something. No, wrong one. I've already adjusted the phone. We're also going to clean it. <laughs> I just did the trigger. The trigger on this thing is horrible. There we go. Now we have a proper trigger. It's got a nice little, little one kilohertz sine wave, about one volt per division. Oh, what? Ah, oh, fuck's sake. I don't get this thing. One moment's DC, one moment's AC. It's so bloody you're all over the sodding place. Okay, I did have it right. I was just getting a bit confused because the uh, trace was in the wrong place. There we go. Now it's triggering properly. Yeah, the trigger on it is janky as all fuck. It's not a very nice trigger. It's pretty shit. That's a trigger, actually. Yeah, we'll turn it off and we'll crack it open. So bear with me while I just put the probe over here so it doesn't fall on the floor and we bear down on my desk. And if you're lucky, you might get a sneak peek at my cock. Nah. But we do have a nice cup of tea. Because it's post work and I am tired. So let's clear a space to work in. <coughs> in typical me style, so remote out the way on top of the tape recorder. This army knife. Ah, not suitable for this. This is some padlocks. They are for my bike. They can go over there. Flathead and this useful contact cleaner. I need that. Oh yeah, another thing is I also recently got hold of one of these and this has an annoying problem of the intensity is stuck at full brightness and the intensity does not work at all. I will show you the schematic, bear with me. Uh, here we go. So display capture. Good bright screen. And you can see my mouse. So this is our intensity info. These are the two max mins and this is a pot on the front. For the life of me, I cannot see why the fuck this is not working. I've tried replacing these transistors. I've checked all the diodes, they're all good. The optocoupler's been replaced and is tested and is good. The resistors seem fine. I might just do some more testing on some of the resistors more close to these parts of the circuit. Maybe they're knocking some bias wrong or something. These capacitors, I don't actually have anything to test capacitors of this value, not effectively. Although I have been experimenting with the component tester on my uh, Hameg 203 DAT-5 scope, so maybe I might hit some success there, I don't know. Either way, the focus, the intensity circuit is so simple, it shouldn't fail. So why the fuck has it failed? This has me completely foxed. The link you can see up here, so go check it out. Um, <laughs> if you've got any suggestions, I'm open to them all. Because I am completely and utterly bloody foxed, and I just do not no, the cause of this problem is so bizarre. I don't get it. Something somewhere is broken, but what? <laughs> it's madness. I imagine it'd be something stupid like a dry solder joint or something. <laughs> but who knows, but we'll go back to the um, Sinclair scope now. I'll move my reel of solder out of the way. Those pins need to go back in the cupboard. Wire strippers, cheap ass ones from Map. Map pins aren't doing too well at the moment, which is bad. There's one thing I like to pick up from there is power supplies, because you know you're not going to get a cheap, dangerous piece of shit that's even going to electrocute you or burn your house down. When you're left to online retailers, there's no guarantee you're not going to get a cheap piece of shit which is going to kill you or destroy your home and murder everyone you love. Here's the dead opto coupler from the uh, Hamex scope. The Hamex HM103. 
Lovely little scope. Even got a component tester on it. Lovely little thing. It's adorable. I'm a bit obsessed with some of these oscilloscopes, I must admit. This battery is good, so this can go. Um, yeah, it can go in the pile of crap over here. Oh, there'd be someone somewhere who'd be like, oh, you need to edit this and do all this post production. So it's like, oh, fuck off with that crap. I can't be asked. I'm tired and I've come home from work. If you don't like it, tough shit. So, let's take the beautiful thing apart. I've sellotaped the batteries in, and we need to actually. That reminds me of the contact cleaner. Because while I have it open in the teardown, I might as well um, clean it up and do some uh, maintenance on it. If I can find my contact cleaner, that... Oh, here it is. WD-40. Almost fully empty, so I need to buy some more of that. About five quid a can, which is not a happy price. Can't smell it at the moment because what is there is going to dry it out. We'll spray this in all the pots and switches. That's a lovely mess. And so, yeah, so we'll start by taking out the batteries. So, and we also need to replace the rusty screws on the front here because they're rusty and horrible. So, I imagine a lot of this I'll just do off camera rather. Well, that might keep you along for the whole process. We'll see. Let's see, if Aiden phones up then I'll probably kill the live stream if he phones up, which is kind of like, never guaranteed. <laughs> sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't, it's a bit random, sometimes he goes through like phases of like ringing every day to never ringing at all. Uh, right, oh, here's my nice big... Duracell batteries, which weren't that expensive, surprisingly. Most of the time you pay a bit of a premium for Duracell. Yeah. The battery connectors seem better days, mostly because it's had batteries leak in it. Because at work using alcohol and alcohol uh, hand wash from the um, toilets to uh, clean out the battery acid. And the dust is still leaking everywhere. Oh, God, wow. Battery acid, bleh, disgusting stuff. Horrible, horrible, horrible stuff. Do we have any or anyone actually watching this crap? Yes, we do. Hello. Do you know the uh, song you used for intro of your old uh, granny's garden? Uh, yeah, that's um, from Turrican One, and it's called Thunder Plains. I absolutely love it. I don't actually own copyright to it, but there was no copyright bots looking out for that particular tune, so I was all good. <laughs> and when I'm not making a penny off my videos, and they're just done for pure sh- The unfair boring existence. Oh, good. Oh, good. One of those is broken. Uh, hang on, let me just uh, retrieve it somehow. <laughs> the metal itself is sheared off. <laughs> I've been doing work on. Here we go. It's from this model of TV right here, and it is a. Um, hopefully, it says what um, CRTs in it. Fuck! I just touched my glasses. Uh, nope. Hang on, I've got a T-shirt here, so I can clean them. See, this is the thing I hate about wearing glasses, is they just get dirt from all possible places of the universe in, like, not in Fento seconds. Uh, right, okay, this is, this is totally... See, anyone else who actually does video production will have some lovely, um, thingy. Uh, here we go. CRT. There we go. <laughs> That's a pretty nice. I would like one of these. I'd like one of these CRTs. Right. Okay, good. Uh, YouTube. No, we're not going to watch someone else's YouTube video. Fuck off. Uh, why is there? Why can it not come up with all the websites I was looking at earlier? I want to have in the part number. At least one of them. 
I was, I was like that one, which is not actually the um, one I'm looking for. Um, right, this is really annoying because I want to tell you the part number and I can't because I can't fucking find it. Arrgh, hang on. We need to Google this fucking thing. Because it's going to be bullshit and make me do it the awkward way because this world is a fucking cunt. But we already know that. Here we go. Radio Museum. Quite a good actual resource. It's a shame they make you pay for everything if you want any more details on what they show here. Here we go. The D5100W, which is quite an interesting CRT actually. Oh god, my uh, obsession with CRT. CRT, go. Images because I'm not actually going to go through you if you want to know how a CRT works just google it There's loads of sites which explain it really well Here we go. Here is a nice um, Where's well, a nice picture here we go Look at that and you can see everything inside It's beautiful I mean just how can anyone not find that sexy as fuck? Absolutely lovely, lovely, lovely tube. And yes, we will be derobing it at some point, but not tonight because I can't be arsed and there's a, it's all taped up and crap. This is like new metal, like shielding type shit that's all sort of peeling off as the stickers peel off. So, what do we actually have inside this thing? There's a few known faults and crap soldering joints and whatnot. But we have... Oh, no. There is something loose in there. Oh, there we go. It just fell out. No. If that's what it was, that's annoying. Get your ass back on there. So what do we have here? My light doesn't actually stretch over enough, so we're gonna... Oh, for fuck's sake. Get your ass back in there, you bitch. Oh dear, you're just gonna have to put up with shitty lighting. Sorry, but I can't be fucked to do anything about it. So we have our CRT, our CRT um, driver stuff, along with the um, HV transformer that is really bodgy. Bodgy, how are you doing? Because it looks like it's been hand wired at the factory <laughs> by factory work. You've got this lovely bodgy ass PCB shield. There's quite a novel solution actually over like the um, range switch board and controls for that. It's all like. HEF logic, you know, 4001 and LS7400, so you've got some. They are, I think, from memory, they are quad na and gates. They may be NAND gates, but I think they're pure AND gates. The 4001 is um, a quad NAND gate from memory. I may be wrong, in fact, don't be surprised if I am. But it's not the only 4001 in here, because it's also on the CRT board at the back. As well as crusty ass like pots that you find in a bloody radio. <laughs> it's like precision resistors. Um, yeah, there's one or two in here. Not like the Haymig, which is basically all precision resistors. Let's bring up the Haymig as an example because that is currently in a taken apart state that you can see all the stuff inside. Look at that. Pretty much close to 90% precision resistors. Compare that to this thing, and yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, this like the uh, other my HM307, which I've recently got working, is this type of um, range switches. I'll give you a view of them, and if any of you know 
what's their part number is and where the hell I can find some, please do tell me because I'm really desperately in need of these. My 307's range switches are kind of like, well, I've managed to get them working now, but I don't know how long for. So yeah, if you know where to get that particular type of range switch from, please do tell because I don't have a clue. I don't know the part number, there's nothing marked on them. They are mystery really nice range switches that are in aminobtanium. Unless you find an old Haymeg scope that's broken, pretty much. <clears throat> But yeah, it's a pretty nice scope. I love the Haymeg scopes. They are pretty damn nice. And they're German made, which always gets a thumbs up. This is British made, which gets a thumbs up, although not British made of quality um, in this case. <laughs> it's like body resistor networks. It's almost a feel like Moss laughing at that circuit board. It's just like, haha. Amateur hour. Yeah, <laughs> it's some type of amateur hour. Look at it. Amount of bodges here. I mean, what the fuck happened here? There's like there's several resistors just soldered onto one point. Like, what the fuck happened there? Oh, it's crazy. Do I see any easy access points into the um, brain switches? Not really. I do into the pots though, which is good. Yeah, I don't need the switches either. They look sealed, although well, switches aren't really a huge problem. It's the range switches. But that pretty much covers this teardown of this particular um, unit. I don't really have a lot I can add about it because I'm still learning the uh, fundamentals of how the oscilloscopes actually work in detail. I can give you a general overview, which I don't think of as any value to anyone. But I do love this. And it has such an adorable CRT. Not the smallest CRT I have, but the smallest electrostatic CRT. And it was custom designed for the Sinclair TV that I showed you. I think a few other manufacturers also used it as well. It's made by Telefunken. But yeah, that really much covers it. I'm going to look and see if there's any more comments. Yes, there is. Did you ever own an Amstrad CPC? No, I don't have one of those, unfortunately. It's on the list of machines to get, but... Uh, I find it rather sad, really, Maplin shutting, because I kind of like actually being able to drive down the shops and buy shit that you otherwise can only get online. And let's be honest, it's e and let's be honest, there's a lot of power supplies I would never get offline because they're fucking dangerous. So actually, yeah, I'm not too happy about Maplin shut. And sure, it's overpriced and there's a lot of crap they sell, but they also sell some interesting stuff. You know, go and look around their little quadcopter section, you get some nice little, like, 40 quid Hubson fly around type things, which are great to just fly around in your bedroom. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> <coughs> that went down the wrong hole. Bearing in mind these are all... If it will let me, yes it will. I can actually pull that out a bit and clean the front panel. 